Hello and welcome to Ula Tea Leaf Readings. My name is Lenore and tonight I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Gemini. If Gemini is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. Okay, let's get started. Okay, knock, knock, knock. And let's see. Okay. Let's see. Get a little situated here. <laughs> um, okay. All right, all right, all right. So we have a big horse. <laughs> you can see that right there. That's very... Uh, um, very apparent that that one is a horse. And I'm going to kind of just pull this away. And I like to just kind of take a spin. See what these look like. See what the negative space, which is the white in between, looks like. I'm going to take a drink here. I'm going to apologize from the beginning. I'm still having, still having some symptoms. Well, I shouldn't say symptoms. Some lasting effects of uh, the COVIDs. Um, <clears throat> have not been feeling the best, but thankfully testing negative. Okay. All right, so... Let's go ahead and start. We have this beautiful figure here, and this looks like uh, a person wearing a dress or a robe of some kind. <laughs> it looks like the wind is blowing it up. Their arms are kind of in this, almost it, it reminds me of like waves. I feel just the, uh, the sensation of standing in a field and the grass is flowing and the wind is blowing and you can't hear anything except for that wind. It feels like it is um, blowing right through you. And I think that this is really uh, related to <clears throat> a sensation of transformation uh just all of the energies all of the kind of stagnant blockages being pushed into new spaces finding an exit flowing right out of you and i and i think of this because um, you know, especially on days when in the spring, in the summer, uh, when a storm is coming in and, you know, I don't think it's always the same depending on what the landscape is like around you, but where I live, it's the flatlands. So, <coughs> excuse me, um, when a storm comes in, the initial uh, kind of wall of wind that kind of hits everything and just all of a sudden the wind comes up hard and um, all of the, here it's very humid, the humid air is just blown away and usually it's a cool wind coming in. And this is like great tornado weather, right? Um, I like to open up all of the windows in the house because it really feels as though um, all of all of the energy, all of the uh, chi is just reorganized. It's pulled out the windows, it's blown through the windows, um, it's scattered, and there's just this clean, beautiful, cool air that takes over. And so when I see this, I really feel that there's been a lot, uh, a lot of 
transition for you. Um, I feel that <coughs> there had been kind of a, a large blockage and I feel that it was very much centered in like your chest area, um, in your heart chakra. Um, this is a very emotional, emotional thing. Um, I think that it was most likely tied to a loss, something, something pretty traumatic, like some kind of, um, you know, uh, an abrupt death, uh, maybe an accident, um, an illness that came on quickly, or maybe violence. Um, I almost kind of wonder if it was something that had to do with violence. Um, and I think that this really was very traumatizing for you. Uh, I think that it kind of basically, when you look at your life, it's like cut in two. There's like before this thing happened and then there's after this thing happened. And that's how you think of your reality. Um, and I feel like it's been, it's been some time since this has happened because I feel that you, um, have gone through a lot of grief. Uh, there's been a lot of dark days, a lot of emotional wreckage. And, um, I think that's been really difficult for you. I mean, you know, probably indescribably difficult. And so, you know, um, people will say that, like, you never get over something. It never gets less painful. But you kind of somehow grow to carry that pain with you. Um, and you find other places for it to flow into. Um, and that's really dependent on your choices. How are you going to manage that pain? Where are you going to put that energy in, you know, into? Uh, and even if you <coughs> are carrying it with you, um, how are you going to carry it with you? Um, is it going to devour you or is it going to... Um, you know, or will this, will it be, will it be the thing that kind of tempers your strength as a being? Will you not succumb to it all the way? Like, no matter how, no matter what you do, you, you, you succumb to this kind of grief, period, right? It's like, um, you know, almost drowning, or maybe you do kind of drown, but you come back. So, um, you know, I think that, and I'm just kind of sorting through this in my mind. I'm kind of just looking at, uh, kind of the impressions that I get from, and I think that there's been just, my goodness, a time of just complete disenchantment disenchant feeling, um, you know, really living in that kind of dark night of the soul, that very bleak landscape uh, that anybody who's gone through uh, deep periods of grief, grief, loss, hurt, um, you know, no, anybody that's gone through these things knows what I'm talking about. And so, um, you know, when you have dwelled in these landscapes, um, for s some period of time for so long, and depending on the relation to the person that has passed over, the person that has suffered this this attack or some kind of violence or illness, 
um, and the people around them, the people around you, your support system, there are a lot of variables um, how these scenarios can play out and um, how they, I mean, you know, they're, they, they affect us all in a similar way, I think. But how uh, we manage that fallout, that pain, that, I mean, utter destruction, right? So, um... And I'm looking at, I want to look at some of these other, these other formations to really kind of get a further idea of what has happened exactly. But, um, I feel that this thing has been devastating. It's been going on for quite a while. Um, but you are coming to an, a place where you are emerging I feel as though there is this distinct air of rising, coming into the sunlight, taking a breath. Um, when you, I think when you're going through like a deep grief, there, it's almost like you've been holding your breath for so long. You're just, you know, it's like a, it's a trauma. It's a trauma reaction. It's the thing that our body does. It's not dissimilar to having like a panic attack, um, being in shock. Uh, you know, just you, you clench up, you stop breathing. You kind of go into a state of just waiting for something to get worse. Or, you know, hoping that there will be some relief, right? Um, but it's, it's not, you know, it's not even as complex in thinking as that. It's just very much an instinct. So I think that in your, in, in your processing of, you know, this time of this thing that has happened, um, I think that you are getting to a, a point where um, you are, you're taking those first breaths, okay? Some of that, some of that immediate anxiety is starting to um, fall away from you. And I'm not saying that you're going to ever feel the way that you did before all this happened, um, but... I think that it's kind of like a beginning to feel just the, the, the trickling of starting your life again. It's, it's going to look different. It's going to feel different. It's going to, you know, I don't know. You know, I don't know exactly who this was. But I know that if it was somebody close, it, I mean, it just... It changes. It changes the landscape of your life. And um, I want to look at this one. Now, it looks like an H, but if you look at it closely, it also looks like two people facing each other. And I get the distinct <coughs> impression that this is um, like you coming together with Somebody who kind of has something like a sister energy. Maybe it is a sister, an older sister, younger sister, um, a best friend. Somebody who has felt like a sister to you. Uh, I think that they have shown up for you. They've checked in with you. Uh, they have, you know, really held you through this situation and all of the different phases of this situation. They have been consistent. They have listened. They've had good advice. They've been patient. They've had unconditional love for you. And while there have probably been other people who on some level have been there for you, nobody has been there like this person has been. And I think that there has grown a closeness that 
most people couldn't understand. I'm sure that even people have commented on the fact that you two have become so close. Um, they've never known two people to be so close. You do a lot together. Maybe you live together. Um, you are kind of just, you know, kind of developed into this, this pair, you know, this, uh, item in some ways. Um, and now I think that this is a platonic thing. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. So, you know, uh, I think that it it's a it's an uncommon closeness especially in this day and age. I think a lot of times families kind of scatter to the wind even if we are close with our siblings <coughs> you know everybody kind of has different things going on and and so you don't really know I mean I don't anyways a lot of people who are super close to their um their family members like this, or, uh, or maybe a good friend. Like I said, it could be a friend that is like a sister, <clears throat> an acquired sister. So I think that really this person has been just very instrumental. I think that this has helped you maintain the openness to love, um, where, I think it could have been easy for you to kind of withdraw yourself from any kind of emotional attachment to somebody. I think you just were sh really shook into the core. Um, but I think that really, you know, this blessing of this relationship has really helped keep you going and uh, really just become so powerful and unfortunately at least this is my this is my perception or my you know little anecdotal um <laughs> kind of view of life is that uh you know most of the people that I've ever met that are the most uh emotionally developed, psychically developed, have the most wisdom, maybe are the kindest, most um, inclusive, um, kind people, are people who have suffered some really, really difficult circumstances, have suffered, um, you know, acute events that have been devastating to them and somehow have managed to find, you know, a way to keep moving forward, you know, is even in those very difficult times and um, in some ways made use of the pain that they have been through, okay? And I feel like this is really kind of true to your situation. I see a lot of love. There's so many hearts here. Okay, I feel like you are just abundant with love. I feel that you want to help people. Um, I feel like you could even be an advocate. Uh, somebody who will give their time to a cause that has meaning to you. I feel like you want to help people, take care of people in a way, um, educate people, uh, be of service to your community, to your family. Um, and I want to look at this horse. Okay. This one, it's going, it's from the physical up through this psychic, emotional, and then with its head going into the metaphysical, spiritual, um, <clears throat> kind of the God zone, the, the area that I look for, um, kind of messages, uh, from loved ones, from our elders, ancestors, that kind of thing. And I think that really, my goodness, you have, <laughs> and I say this in the nice, in the nice way, um, you've become a beast of a person. I mean, you just really, 
um, are so, so, you have such a big heart and you're so, um, giving of yourself, but you're, you have a power that not a lot of people carry with them. I think that, uh, and I want to bring this card up here. This is the, um, queen of wands, right? And this is, this is one of my favorite cards because this is all about this kind of self-actualization. This is about the process of self-knowledge, self-acceptance, love, unification of the parts of self, uh, the transformation of, um, of this beautiful goddess and her cat who starts out as, I think, a black leopard panther and then um, becomes this cheetah as the woman is also transforming through her levels of initiation um, and self-realization, self-actualization. And uh, she really just has that very um, fiery uh, knowledge. I mean, it's a, this is obviously, <laughs> you can see with the colors and the artwork that this is definitely fire element, but she also wears Pisces. And so this is really, um, somebody with great clarity, great, uh, grasp of control over their emotionality, their decision making, um, really, you know, sees the path that they want to travel and makes it happen. Um, and also is careful to remember their origins, right? Because this, this, this lady has walked through hell basically and has suffered and has, you know, um, not always had the kindness <laughs> of the universe, right? So I think that this totally makes sense to me. It, <laughs> totally relates to your own story in my mind uh that you you know you maybe you maybe you don't feel like you're all the way there and maybe you're not okay um but i think that you are well on your way to to this you know realized form i think that you are stronger than you know i think that uh, you have so much to offer the people around you. I think that, I mean, just looking at this horse, it just, it's standing, it looks serene, it looks solid, right? It's, uh, it is moving between this physical, emotional, psychic, and me metaphysical I think that you are so activated on each level. It's all flowing together. Um, you have access to parts of yourself that some people spend probably multiple lifetimes trying to get to. Probably, you know, join all kinds of magical orders and, you know, do all kinds of <laughs> different kinds of um, new age things and you know, uh, whatever yogas and, and crystals and energy work and all these things, which are, you know, they're all valid paths and techniques, but some people just find that right alignment. And sometimes it is found through things that are terrible. And, and I hate to say that, but that's really, you know, sometimes that's the honest, that's the honest thing. And so, you know, it's been, it's not been easy for you. And I empathize deeply. Um, I want to look at this one. It looks like an M to me. And I think that's really important. We have an M that is taking up a lot of the uh, tea leaves here. And you know, I don't know, is that your mother? Is that the name of the person that you lost? Is it a sacred name for you? Um, I'm not sure, but I know that it's important. And I know that 
uh, while you're watching this, you're, it will come to mind. I know that you'll know who it is. Um, it could be your sister. I'm also seeing it reflected up here in this metaphysical. So I wonder if this is somebody <coughs> who has passed. If this is um, a family member, uh, somebody, somebody related to your life in some way. Okay, um, maybe an ancestor. I do think that they have been communing with you maybe through dreams and also I'm looking at this and as I'm seeing this it looks like it's a little animal it looks like a little cat um maybe a dog but I think that this is maybe this is silly but it seems like almost your animal um animals possibly have been behaving strangely um they just, and I think almost like because the seasons are changing, um, it, you know, it's becoming spring here in the Northern Hemisphere and in the, in the Southern Hemisphere, it's going into um, kind of the lull of getting into winter, fall and winter. So the, maybe you've thought, oh, it's, you know, the seasons are changing. They're get kind of riled up or maybe they're being a little more, um, you know, just, blazing about but something has been up with them and I want to say that I think this is very much related to this person who has been communing with you uh I think that you should look into your dreams maybe some vision work like intentional vision work active imagination um I don't you know making some kind of appeals to receive uh, a, a clear statement from them or a clear message, something that's perceivable, um, to you. And, uh, I think that will come. I think that's going to be important. And I think that's also going to be important for your healing. Okay. Um, I know that you've been so very active in your self work and your self care. Uh, and so, uh, I think that this, this, person or persons wants to let you know that you're not alone you're being held you know supported coveted by those who are around you that you necessarily you know might not necessarily see with your eyes <laughs> so um you know you're in a very loving space okay i'm also seeing and i wanted to show this one before and i kind of got past it uh the j there's a j here and i i think that this one's really important to this um clearing of kind of the energies and the transition and i think that uh transition in your state of being um your emotional state mental state i think that this is um it could be a name but i almost wonder if it's like a word like something I don't know. Like, I almost think that it's like the name of not a person, but like a place, maybe uh, somewhere with a J that maybe you should go and visit um, like a special place or uh, something. It's meaningful in some way. OK, um, and I don't know what that is. There's, I don't have clarity exactly about that. And I also just wanted to zoom in here and we have this uh kind of bow here and usually when i see that it has it's kind of related to um in my mind like any any kind of uh awareness campaign for like cancer um not the sign like actual cancer the disease and I kind of feel like this is related to maybe that person who's been getting in touch with you. Um, maybe they ha they had uh, they passed from cancer. They had some kind of battle with cancer, and I think that will help um, kind of help you identify who this is um, because I see it grouped in with like the the animal and. Um, 
there's really just kind of these ambiguous things but i feel like they're you know they just have like a message for you it's like almost like a cipher or a code like they want you to figure out some kind of code that they're sh you know showing you symbols or uh images like in your dreams they're familiar but like you have to put them together because they're trying to i think they're trying to let you know who it is and also give you a, like a you know some kind of something some kind of actual message so um you know if that's something that makes sense to you you know, I would love to hear about that if it's not too sensitive, you know, um, just even just a verification that maybe something like this has come through for you. Uh, and, you know, I'm always very interested to hear about that. Sometimes we get some really like detailed, um, detailed relations to people that are, have seen the readings and stuff. And, um, yeah, so like when I'm doing these, I kind of just see like a little bit of imagery, but I don't always necessarily know what it has to do with. I just kind of, you know, um, try my best to get it, <laughs> to get it into words and to be able to share it. Uh, we have an exclamation mark here. Okay, so I think that there's going to be something important coming up. Um... And I feel like it's a positive thing. It almost feels like because part of this looks like a little heart, I think that it's, you know, there's going to be a really uh, loving, endearing kind of uh, event happening or um, maybe some kind of an anniversary. It's, you know, it feels important and that's coming up soon. Um, and I see these, this little grouping of, um, tea leaves in this tea here moving around as I'm talking. I feel like this is going to be an emotional thing for you. You're going to be kind of all over the place with it to some degree, but I think it'll be a good release. I think that this will be important for continuing to let go of some of those blockages I think that something that um, might be helpful to you, I don't know for sure, but this is just kind of my, um, you know, soft advice, is that maybe you do something to honor your person that you are missing. Um, something small for yourself. Maybe make a special area in your house for them if you haven't done that already. If you do already have something for them, maybe, um, you know, creating some kind of keepsake or, uh, you know, a magical item, something that kind of encapsulates some of the emotion and love and honor that you have for this person. You could write them a letter um, frame a picture, make them some art, something, you know, I think that doing something physically, putting your mind, body, spirit into it, um, is a very, uh, cathartic process and also just a beautiful offering and remembrance for the person that we love so much. And, you know, it never hurts to do something like that. Okay. All right. Jim and I, I thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am sorry. This was a little bit of an emotional reading. Um, I feel that, you know, it, it, it can feel, it feels like it might be a little overwhelming to some degree, but I think that this is a happy message you know, um, coming from a dark place into a place of light. And, um, you know, I just have a lot of empathy and love for you. And, um, I'm very honored to be able to read for you. And, um, these kind of messages really, uh, hit home for me as I've had, you know, a, a, a good amount of death in my life. So, 
um, you know, when I see the, when I see these kinds of messages, uh, it is, it is emotional for me <laughs> on a deep level. But, um, you know, I, I know that healing takes time and it can be so uncomfortable, but it's not unlike when we have, you know, a cut or a burn and, um, you know, you feel like it's never, ever going to heal and it is itchy and it's uncomfortable and, um, you know, you're constantly reminded of the trauma of it, but, you know, over time it comes to a place where it is manageable and, um, that doesn't mean that it didn't happen. It doesn't mean that, you know, that person that you love, um, is not very important. They will always be very important. They will always be with you. You will always carry them with you. And it's really my strong belief that the best way that we can honor the people who have gone on before us is by living the best life that we can, by living well. And, um, you know, maybe I'm a little sentimental, a little superstitious, but I really do believe that they are, their consciousness is with us on some level. And they want us to do the things we want to do to succeed and to enjoy life. And, you know, so... Um, but it's hard to get to that place and I get that, but I really feel that you are. And, and so, um, this is going long, so I'm going to wrap it up, but thank you so much. Uh, if you would be so kind as to like the video helps me get into the algorithm. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please think about doing so hit the little bell button. It'll let you know <coughs> when the next videos are coming out. Uh, we are on a two-a-day schedule now, so every sign will be read once a week. And um, other than that, please leave a comment. Let me know how you're doing. Uh, you know, I love reading each and every comment. They all mean a lot to me. Uh, you know, a lot of you are so kind and have such wonderful energy, and I really appreciate that. Uh, okay. We'll talk again in uh, another seven days. <laughs> in the meantime, you can watch your other placements. Thank you, thank you, thank you.